Good morning, good morning, everybody. All right, let's try that again. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Amen, amen. I know it's gloomy outside and all of that stuff, but guess what? As they say, the S-O-N is still shining, and he's shining bright in our lives. If the Lord has been good to you, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise on this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we're going to go ahead and get started with our morning worship service. This is the time when we get to all celebrate that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. For we know that he is God and we bless his name. I'm going to ask that everyone now to stand to your feet as our choir comes and they get ready to open us up and so lift up your voice. Let's have church all this morning. Amen. God, our Father, how we thank you for another chance, God, that you've touched us with your finger of love. You woke us up this morning, God. You started us on our way. You gave us traveling grace to this place right now, God. And here we are saying thank you for what you've done for us all week long. God, thank you for holding us in the power of your might. Thank you, God, for keeping us under your wings of protection. Thank you, God, for, for provisions that you made day after day. Now, God, we usher your, your spirit and your power and your anointing in this place right now. Father, we pray that it fall fresh upon each and every one of us, God, for we need you. We need to hear a word from you. We need our cups filled so we can go a little bit further. Now, God, I pray that you bless everyone that's here. 
Father, someone here today needs to hear you, God. I want you to see the desire that's on their heart, the trouble that may be weighing them down, the sadness that may be trying to keep them down. Father, I pray that you move in such a miraculous way on today that they leave this place and did not my heart burn within. Was my joy restored? Oh, God, thank you for what you're going to do today. Now, bless this service. Let it be that that you would have it to be. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Listen, it's good to see each and every one of you on another first Sunday. First Sunday of November. Lord, we have gone through 2024 and we are swiftly continuing on through it now. But I'm thankful that by the grace of God, I'm afforded another chance to see another first Sunday. Then we get to come together and rec recognize just what our Lord and Savior has done for us on the cross and in his resurrection. We won't belabor the time. Choir is going to come. They're going to bless us and take us higher in the Lord. Y'all, let's praise the Lord.
this is the will of God. I think they done went back to the scripture that we've been talking about the last few weeks. Rejoice, I say in the Lord. Always. And again, I say rejoice. Praise the Lord. Somebody thank you, choir, for reminding us we ought to rejoice in the Lord. Listen, I want to go over a uh, few things for our announcements for uh, today. Let us first and foremost continue in prayer one with another. Uh, we want to pray for our church as a whole, the Great El Bethel Church. Amen. That God continues to move the way he has. Uh, there are some families that we want to keep lifted. The Logan family, uh, we want to keep praying for Sister Kim Norris. We're praying for um, our family, the McCoy family. Uh, we're just praying that God moves in such a way that when we feel the presence of God, when we see the movement of God, oh, that your soul just gets so on fire that you can't help but to rejoice in the Lord. And the prayers of the righteous surely availeth much. So let's pray that God moves in a miraculous way. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, amen, we are going to have our fall festival on next Sunday. Praise the Lord, right? Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, uh, it's immediately following service. Next Sunday, second Sunday, we will have our fall festival. And let me go ahead and add this to it. Next Sunday, y'all dress casual next Sunday. Amen. Amen. I know we like to have our Sunday best on, but we want to go. We're going to have a good time after church with some fun, some games, some other things, some food. Praise the Lord. Uh, so y'all make sure that you dress comfortable next Sunday so that we can go right to our celebration of fall festival and fellowshipping one with another. Do y'all have any other special announcements or things? Uh, okay, next Sunday, uh, members, everybody, uh, y'all bring a bag of candy on next Sunday. Amen. Y'all bring a bag of candy. It should be on sale right now. It's after Halloween. But y'all get the good stuff. Amen. Amen. Y'all get the good stuff. Uh, the stuff the kids gonna like. Not what y'all gonna like. Amen. Amen. Don't get the bag of butterscotch. Amen. And the bag with the, uh, what's the little strawberry candy? Amen. Y'all get the good stuff. Y'all get the sweet tarts and the Snickers and the Twi. Y'all get the good stuff. Amen. Amen. We want to bring candy so that we can bless these young people even more so as we celebrate on next Sunday. Amen. 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 Um, this week is an important week. Amen. Amen. This week, Tuesday in particular, is an, an important day. Listen, if you got out and you early voted, thank you very much. We bless the Lord for you. If you hadn't made it to the polls, Tuesday is your day. Every vote counts. Whether you believe it or not, every vote counts. I am encouraging each of you to go to the polls, cash your vote, because it does matter. And trust me, we, the nation, need your vote more than you know. Amen. More than you know. If you, if you think it's bad and they don't, listen, multiply that by 20. Or a hundred, and that's how bad you need to go make sure you vote. So I'm encouraging everyone that can and will exercise your right. Vote if you have it on Tuesday. Uh, if it's a long line, don't get discouraged. We need, we are, and we encouraging you, stay in that line. Amen. Because <laughs> we need everybody to get out and vote. So let's do our part so that on the next Sunday we can celebrate even more so at the fall festival and church service saying, look what the Lord has done. Amen? Amen. 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 Listen, this is uh, the end of the year. We are uh, rapidly approaching 2025. Lord have mercy. 
We 2025 will be here in a couple of months, and so uh, y'all know occasionally, well not occasionally, all the time people make plans of what they gonna do when the new year comes, right? How many of y'all have made New Year's resolutions? Yeah, don't, don't. Right, how many, it, it's right there with the vision boys. How many of y'all have did vision boys? It's, it's all of that is right there together. You have a plan to do something better, to do something greater. Uh, I've been here, uh, we, we've been having wonderful service year after year. My goal is every year, ought to be a better year than it was last year. Amen. Amen. That's my goal for the Greater El Belmo Church, that every year ought to be better than it was last year. So with that, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to make this encouraging plea. Now, actually, it's not a plea. It's a promise. It's a promise. This is what is going to happen, and I fall right in line with it. Uh, one of the things for 2025 that we will begin doing, I'm pushing it out right now, we're going to start at 10. Amen. 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 We will start at 10. If you're not here, I know I've been guilty of it. I'm on, that is my goal uh, for each Sunday. We're going to start sooner than 2025, but 2025 at 10 a.m., if it's me, First Lady and Brother High here, we, we start. We start. Amen. At 10 a.m. I know we've got comfortable through the year, but 10 a.m. we want to be respectful of time and we can get on out of here. Amen. Amen. So that is one of the goals for 2025. There's a whole lot more that I want to see happen here at the Greater El Belco Church. And we are going to get there. As a matter of fact, here's one that I want to also put out for those that was not at the business meeting. Uh, 2025 actually launches in another campaign called Campaign 50. Campaign 50. I know some of y'all already said, what is Campaign 50? Campaign 50 is uh, individuals who are willing to commit to going over and beyond your tithe and your offering every month of giving $50 every month, over and beyond. What you, Campaign 50 is something that we're using. Uh, our goal is to, um, I said this last Sunday out of frustration, but our goal is to uh, start to do things to secure a loan. And this loan is going to get us to a place to where we can do a lot of things at one time instead of trying to piece things together. Amen. And to make sure that we are having qualified people do the work that needs to be done. Amen. Companies certified that we can hold their feet to the fire even more so to do the work that's needed to be done. And in order to do that, um, we want to make sure that when we secure a loan, we can pay for the loan. Amen. Amen. There are people I'm looking at who own homes, and it's just two of y'all. And y'all, some of y'all got some nice houses. Some of y'all got some houses that's worth millions of dollars. Oh, you're praying on it anyway. But some of you, and, and you've been taking care of that, so imagine what all of us can do if we get together and say, I'll give $50 over and beyond so that we can help make whatever note that we get so that we can do the things. And I'm trying to ensure that the Greater El Bethel Church is moving forward and that you can see your tithes at work. Amen. Amen. Because if you don't see it at work, you start to think, what are we doing with it? Let's be, we, 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 we know how us is is. Get the talking, having side meetings, amen. So we want to make sure that we are doing what's necessary. But in order to do that, we need some help. Now, I will say, since the meeting, praise the Lord, there's been some individuals who've come and said, put me down. I, I agree to it. They are agreeing to it. Now, you ain't got to raise your hands. You ain't got to say nothing in front of anybody. You can come let me know. I have a list that I've been keeping. As a matter of fact, somebody was so so 
school full of the Lord and faith. They gave their whole year. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for that. I thank God for that example. And if you want to know more about it, I'm not going to take too much time on it, but if you want to know more about Campaign 50, come see me. We talked about it in the business meeting. A lot of people know what that is. It is very biblical based, and we're trying to do what's necessary to keep Greater El Bethel moving forward. Amen? Amen. But first, we're going to start on time. Amen. Amen. There's some other things, but we'll get to those things later. Uh, how's your Bible read going? We hit day 300 today. Day 300. You got 65 more to go. Amen. Amen. This is a new month. This is a new month. Uh, I know of one person, my, um, I'll call her my, uh, my auntie sister or my sister auntie. <laughs> who celebrated a birthday, but if you are celebrating or will celebrate a birthday in the month of November, would you please stand? Would you please stand? Hey, man, look at that. Look at that. Come on. Give, give, give everybody that stand right there. Let them choose. Let them choose. You ain't got it. Amen. Mama celebrates a birthday on this month. Amen. Amen. Let me. I, I'm gonna go over here with I'm gonna walk with Dixon to, to. She has been reminding us. This our mother has been reminding us since a couple of months ago that she celebrates a birthday this month, and you will be 94 years old. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, we thank the Lord for all that he has done for you, how he's keeping you, and you are an inspiration to us, and a reminder that God will take care of his own. Amen, amen, amen. Did we miss somebody? Oh, Josiah? Josiah, how old are you going to be, Josiah? Seven. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, he coming with you. He got you. Here you come. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all have a birthday cake on us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. I appreciate you. You can go back to your seat. I thank you. <laughs> Amen. 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 Now listen, if we have any visitors that are watching online, anybody in the house today, listen, we thank the Lord for your presence. We don't take it lightly, and we, huh? oh, my, thank you, thank you. Did anybody get married in the month of November? Amen, thank you. Amen. Dixie, come back. Amen, see, 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 I'm gonna shake this fella's hand. Listen, this fella, that's a fella who remember his wedding anniversary. Amen. Amen. I think he got some frowning points for that one right there. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Uncle Stanley, they get a wedding anniversary cake. Take the other one to Nanny over there. Amen. <laughs> Listen, happy anniversary. I'm sorry. That, that, that's my fault. Hey, good catch. Amen. Amen. Happy, happy anniversary to you and may God continue to bless your marriage for many more years to come. Amen. Amen. Now, what was I doing just before that? Visitors, amen. Uh, those that are watching online in the house, listen, thank you so much for sharing with us, being here with us. Uh, we don't take it lightly and we pray that something is said on today that they can encourage, encourage your walk with Christ. That every day that you're walking with him is better and sweeter than the day before. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, choir. Y'all come on back and give us some more good news, some good encouragement that we can keep climbing higher in the Lord.
Amen. 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 Y'all, I forgot to mention uh, a couple of things. Uh, Deacon Morton, Deacon Tony Morton is asking to meet with all men, all men immediately following uh, morning worship service. All men, please see Deacon Morton following morning worship service. And then um, I said this last Sunday, I sent a message out during the week, but then I, uh, I did like this. I looked at my pocket and I said, oh, wait a minute, let me go back and again say thank you to all of y'all for the love that was shown on last Sunday. Amen. Amen. Pastor, the appreciation, man. Amen. I thank the Lord for socks and pocket squares and some other essential items. Uh, Red Bulls. Amen. I thank the Lord. Y'all bought a few burgers this week. Praise the Lord. Thank y'all so much for the love that was shown last Sunday. And it is truly felt from the bottom of my heart. So again, thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Listen, um, 15th chapter, book of Luke. 15th chapter, the book of Luke. And since I'm on that note, amen. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. Y'all believe that? Say it with me. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I know you're my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Now, God, I bless your name for the word that you're about to give to us right now. Father, I pray that you speak to us like only you can. Father, I pray that you would let your word not fall on deaf ears, that it may prick someone's heart, that they may come running and say, Lord, what must I do to be saved? That they may feel a sense of presence that their walk with you can be strengthened. Now, God, I pray that you would sit me down, that you may stand. Father, that these your people may not see or hear me, God, but they may see and hear you. Now, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Luke, 15th chapter want to look at verse number 20. Very familiar verse there. Very familiar story. We've read it a time or two. But every time you read scripture, God has a way of giving you something different out of it each and every time. If you just adhere and listen to him. You have to say amen. 
still looking and said, hold on, preacher. All right, Luke 15, verse 20. I'll be reading from the NIV version, and it reads like this. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. May the Lord add a, add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and most of all, the doers of his holy word. If you don't mind, allow me to use this for a thought or a subject. The work of forgiveness. The work of Forgiveness. Ooh, that's a tough word. Forgiveness. As a matter of fact, many of us have had to deal with the reality that forgiveness isn't always the easiest thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, we have to talk about this work of forgiveness. Because you're never more like God than when you give and you forgive because both realities are rooted in love. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me again. Hear me again. You are never more like God yeah. than when you give and when you forgive. Because both realities are founded, function, they are rooted in the love of God. Yeah. And when you show the love of God, you begin to more easily and more consistently both give and forgive. Yeah. But, but if we'll be honest on a Sunday morning, forgiveness isn't the easiest thing to do. As a matter of fact, there are some people on your pre on your pew, on your roll right now who can testify forgiveness is not the easiest thing to do. And, and sometimes it's a struggle to forgive. There, there, there are brothers and sisters who can testify, listen, I love the Lord. I really do. I love the Lord's church. I love the Lord's word. I love fellowshipping with God and God's people. But when they've wronged me, when they've offended me, when they've cut me the wrong way, and they did it on purpose, and they knew what they were doing, it is difficult to forgive. That there are some amens right now that don't necessarily want to be spoken today, but they're, they're, they're in your spirit of an individual. Because some of us, some of us can get hurt, can get offended, can get abused, misused, and as a consequence of that, although we know that our response is to forgive, sometimes it's a struggle to forgive. Those of us who can be honest and testify, they shouldn't have done that. Well, maybe you said, I, I'd rather, I'd rather get, get them than forgive them. Then there are some people in here, when you pray, as a matter of fact, you pray like this, Lord, I know what you said, but if you could just do me this one favor, and just shut them down right quick. I'll be all right with that. Because this work of forgiveness is not an easy thing to accomplish. It's a struggle sometimes to forgive. But may I tell you, along with the struggle to forgive, let me say a word about this strength in forgiveness. Because there is strength in forgiveness, y'all. Hear me when I tell you that forgiveness does not just release the person who offended you. But it releases you from the baggage that you have to carry as a consequence of the offense. When, 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 when you learn to forgive, it frees 
frees you from carrying that load, frees you from being burdened down with that offense, frees you from staying up late at night trying to figure out how to pay them back, frees you from dealing with all those things that some kind, sometimes will cloud our minds with regards to how to deal with this work of forgiveness. Now let me tell you about the strength of forgiveness. Let me give you some things about the strength of forgiveness. It gives you an opportunity to model the work and the witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. It gives you an opportunity not just to come to church and have church, but to be the church. It gives you an opportunity to, 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 to let the witness of Christ be seen in your life. Is it easy? Oh no. It ain't easy, brothers and sisters. Matter of fact, I stood here at the beginning of the message to tell you forgiveness is not the easiest thing to do. It, it's it's rough part of discipleship. And I would dare to say that forgiveness may be the most difficult lesson of discipleship that each one of us needs to learn. But 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 I must admit at the same time. And I'm on assignment this Sunday, not simply to spoon feed you with the milk of the word. But today, the Lord said, listen, I'm deputizing you by the divine to give some people some meat and medicine of the word. Because, because if we're going to be the people of God who do not just simply stay at one level of, of maturity, but we want to grow into the person that God wants us to be. Sometimes we have to eat the meat of the word. And sometimes we have to take the medicine of the word. And Jesus says that if you're going to represent me, forgiveness has to be a part of your life's reality. Sometimes it's a struggle, oh yes it is, but it will not always be easy. But Jesus says, that's the way I want you to represent me. So there is strength in forgiveness. Now, church family, now, now that we've set the stage, now, now, now I know sometimes it can be a struggle sometimes, and then we can find strength in forgiveness. But let me tell you about a story about forgiveness. Because here in Luke chapter 15, we are introduced to a man who has two sons. The older of his son and the younger of his sons are both in the house with him throughout the duration of their lives. But once upon a time, there was this younger son who comes to his father and he says, Dad, I want you to give to me the lot of my inheritance that falls on me. He said, I want to take my money and I want to go live life. I want to see some things. I, I've been in this house for a long time. Now, I want to spread my wings. I want to see what the world has to offer. He says, I, I, I heard some things out there beyond these walls that I just want to see. I want to have the sun shining in my face. I want to have the wind blowing through my hair. I want to feel the sand between my toes on the seashore. He says, I don't want to go live life. And he, says, he says, listen, and they tell me, they tell me there's such a thing called happy hour. I want to go see what that thing is about. They, they tell me there's some clubs that I need to go check out. He, he said, they tell me there's an opportunity beyond these walls, outside of these houses. And he says, I want to experience some things. I want to see what it's all about. And daddy went out of squabble with his son. Gives him the opportunity to get the portion of the goods that falls to him. Now, now you need to understand. You need to understand at first blush, this, this, this by its own merit is disrespectful and is discourteous to the father. The father is still alive. And he's asking for the inheritance that would have come after his father's death. This is disrespectful. This is discourteous. And you find out later in the story that there are some disgusts in parts of this son's experience. He, he, he's, a, he, he's a good Jewish boy 
who's now disrespecting his father, discourteous to his father. And Jesus helps us in this story by saying that the father gave him what he wanted. All right, yeah. He says, father looked at him and said, you want to experience it? You, you got free will to do whatever you think you big and bad enough to do. You want to spread your wings? Go spread your wings and tell me how it works out for you. Tell me how that goes for you in days to come. And so this boy, he gets what he gets and he goes out. Now, now remember, Jesus is telling this story to a group of Pharisees. He's telling it to some brothers and sisters who are legalistic. They know the letter of the law and so he's helping them to understand how the law operates. When he couples it with love. He said, look how this thing operates when you couple it with love. And let, let me give it to you again. He says, the law is what it is. It stands. He says, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Yeah. But when you couple law with love, you begin to act in a different way. Did, did, I, mention, did I mention to you that, they, that, 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 that you're never more like God? until you give and you forgive because both of them are rooted in love so 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 the father gives his father so the father gives his son what he wants he goes out spends all his money bible calls it in the new international version wow living but, but he goes out there and he engages in some wild living. If you, if you have the old school King James version, it said riotous living. So he goes out there, has him a party. He enjoys himself, y'all. He's a big baller, shot call. As a matter of fact, everybody is gathered around him because he's the one paying the tab. Every time they go out and eat, drink, and be merry. And you know how that goes around a bunch of friends. As long as you pay in the town, everybody's around him. Everybody's enjoying his company. He's having the time of his life until the money ran out. And the money ran out. And when the money ran out, he was no longer the shot call. He, he, he was no longer the big baller. And then, to make bad matters worse, after he ran out of the money, a severe famine hit the land. Oh, now things have got tight for him. And if you live long enough, you'll find out that there are some seasons in this life when tight living shows up. If you live long enough, you'll testify that sometimes there are some lean seasons when we have to go through and get through. You're not is on top of the mountain, sometimes you find yourself in the middle of, middle of the valley. And this brother finds himself in a lean season. It's five years ago. They've been depleted. Now your Bible says he's got to do something to keep himself going. He decides to get a job. Now, he ain't never had a job before. He's been in daddy's house all his life. He's been chilling, enjoying himself, living his best life in the comfort of his daddy's house. But now he has to get a job. Now some folk would say, oh, he did well by getting a job. He needed to get a job. He was the one that got out there. It was his fault. But he sells himself out to a farm. And he begins to feed the farmers pigs. This sounds good, right? Sounds like, sounds like, sounds like God, if you need any kind of job at this point, it sounds like he's doing all right. But this is a Jewish boy. And no Jewish people would ever find themselves doing anything with swine, with pig, with pork. And, and now he has gotten to a disgusting point in his reality because he's feeding the pigs. He's 
slapping the hog, y'all. He is feeding the pigs in the pig pen. And to make bad matters worse, he's so hungry that a thought passed through his mind that he would eat what the pigs were eating. Mm. That, 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 that he is now going to eat what the pigs were eating. This, this is a Jewish boy, y'all. Yeah. Who has lowered himself, demeaned himself, demoralized himself to the point that he's now ready to eat what the pigs have been eating. Yeah. But, 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 your Bible says, does not stop there. Because the Bible says, he came to himself. Oh, bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every now and then, if you had some kind of connection with the Creator, there'll be some seasons in your life when you snap out of that foolishness. There are some seasons in your life when you come to yourself. Can I find about six people in this church who can testify? I did what I was big and bad enough to do. I made some bad decisions. I've made some missteps and some mistakes, but thanks be unto God that he had enough grace still lingering around me that I came to my senses. Came to himself. And he said, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. He said, I don't got to live like this. This is not the way I've been intended to live. This is not the way God created me to live. This is, this, he said, this is what I'm going to do. He says, I'm going back to my father's house. And, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. He says, he says, I'm going to say, Father, I'm no more longer worthy to be called your son. He says, I sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. And this is what I need you to do. Make me like one of your higher servants. And that, that, he began to record and rehearse this in his mind. This was his apology. This was his, his note being written out. It was rewritten in his mind. He was like, my father's servants don't even have to live like this. He says, Lord, and if they don't have to live like I know I don't have to live like Listen, that guilt had gotten a hold of him so much that he could no longer stay where he was. He says, I'm going back to my father's house. And when I get there, I'm going to tell him, Daddy, listen, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against you. No longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Rewind, press play. He understood. He did not just offend the heart of God. He offended the heart of another person as well. Yeah. He says, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. I ain't even worthy to be called your son. Just let me come back. Yeah. Make me like one of your high servants. Oh, yeah. Now he's walking back to the house this time. He don't rehearse it. He done got it down to a science. He know exactly what he's going to say. When he gets there, he's walking back to the house. He's making his way to his father's house. And while he's going, your Bible says, if you still got it open, it says that his father sees him in distance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sees him afar off. And the daddy, watch this, does not wait until the son gets to him. The daddy starts to run yeah, yeah, yeah. to the son. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had about 10 or 12 people that never understand that while you are making your way to the father, he's already making his way to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's making his way to you, and while he's going to the father, the father sees him, and the father does not wait till he gets to the house. He runs out the house, throws his arms around him, gives him a kiss, and because he had compassion on him, he said, oh, oh, my son. Now, now there's more to this story, but, but, but can I unpack this work of forgiveness right here on this chapter 15? Because 
It seems to me that when we read Luke 15, we'll understand some things about the work of forgiveness. And I submit, church family, that this work of forgiveness, watch this, begins with the reality that it requires the proper attitude. Ooh, let the church say attitude. Ooh, we've been on the mind the last few weeks. And we are, we right back at it again. It requires the proper attitude. If your Bible's still open, your app is still unlocked, you remember that the scripture says that while the boy was coming, the father had compassion on him. I like that word compassion. Compassion. Compassion doesn't mean to feel sorry for somebody. It literally means come passion. Feel the same thing. Feel what the other person is feeling. It literally means to be in the skin of another. Okay, let me give it to you again. Compassion. To feel the same thing with another person. Literally means to be in the skin of another. That we begin to feel what the other person feels. We experience what the other person is experiencing. And because this father was feeling the pain of his son, feeling the guilt that the boy was experiencing, he decided, I ain't going to wait for the boy to get to me. He says, I'm going to run and offer some forgiveness to him. Now, 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 I mentioned, I should have mentioned, I hope I mentioned it, but I didn't, I won't mention it right now. This part, this message right here, this, this, this is for the grown Christians. This, this is for the grown. Remember, we talked about milk and meat. This is meat. This is for the grown Christian. This is not for the folk who just satisfied with showing up on, at church every Sunday and just sitting in there and singing and rocking with the choir. No, this is for the grown Christian. This is for somebody who wants to grow up in God. Because there's going to come a season, brothers and sisters, when you and I can't wait for the other person to come back to us. And say, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean it. I didn't do it that right. I, sometimes because of your Christian compassion, you're going to have to go to somebody else and just free them from the burden of their mistakes. That, okay, okay, that's okay. I thank, thank you for those that are clapping and praising the Lord. But I understand every now and again, this right here can get a little rough. I understand that walking through here is going to be difficult. But I submit that if you can remember how you felt mm -hmm. when you were the offender All right. and how you felt when you got released from the offense that you committed, yeah. it just might be the same thing, the same one. You may be the same person who's able to release the offense from somebody else right. as well. Right. Oh, let's be clear. Let's be clear. I want everybody in the room to be really clear. There is no one among us who are free from offense. So, so don't go looking down your nose at folk because of the offense that they made. Unless you remember that likewise I have messed up too. Can I find somebody who can testify? Listen, I know what it means to do that which I should not have done. Yeah. Anybody been there? That, 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 I know I shouldn't have been doing that. I wouldn't talk that. But thanks be unto God. I received compassion. And because I received it, my attitude now is not always given. Yeah. But to release them. Yeah. Free them. It's, it's an attitude. It's, it's an attitude, brothers and sisters. He says, listen, I need to free you. He says, I need to free you now. Now, now, I get it. I get it. I understand. Because some of us, some parts of this message are going to be saying, but you don't understand, Pastor. They ain't even asked for forgiveness. I, I didn't tell you that they needed to ask. For forgiveness. I said the father ran to the son and extended it. Oh, but they didn't say I'm sorry. I know they didn't say I'm sorry. 
But the Christian in you says, I'm going to forgive you because forgiveness, did you hear me? Ain't just about you. It's also about freeing me from the burden I've been carrying as well. So the Bible says he has had his attitude. He has his attitude. His attitude allowed him to have compassion on the young boy. And here's the beauty of the work of forgiveness. That, 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 that it, it's, it's now, it's the relationship of it. It's the relationship. Watch the text. Because the text suggests not only did this brother have the opportunity to have compassion extended to him, but when you read Ephesians chapter 4, y'all turn to Ephesians chapter 4. When you read Ephesians chapter 4, you'll find out that this work, you'll find out what forgiveness is all about. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4, when you read, go down to the end of the fourth chapter, you'll find the words that says this. Brothers and sisters, we ought to get rid of all bitterness, mm -hmm. rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Y'all in there? Ephesians 4.31, y'all in there? Y'all got it? Let's read it together. I want, I, I, we're going to read that together because I want it to sink in. Let's read it together. Ephesians 4.31. It reads like this. Let's go. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Now, 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 when you remember, when you remember, when you remember how much you've been forgiven, it ought to prompt you to forgive somebody else. When you remember how he wiped your slate clean, it ought to help you wipe the slate clean for somebody else. I get it. This is not easy, but it's an attitude that must be cultivated in a growing Christian. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. Let me let me keep moving. Now, I suggested that it, re it requires a proper attitude, but may I also suggest in the second place that when we know and we learn about this work of forgiveness, watch this. It reconciles with positive activity. Ooh. Y'all need a steak knife because this meat is tearing y'all up. Tearing all of us up right now, right? Woo, give me some milk now. We on this meat today. Lord have mercy. It reconciles with positive activity. Some people forgive but still have negative actions. You didn't really forgive. Somebody say reconciles. Reconciles. It means to balance the side of the ledger. It means to make things right again. It means reconcile with positive activity. Listen, listen, listen. His son, his father's son. Y'all, that boy was wrong as I'll get out. He didn't do nothing right. He was disrespectful. He was discourteous. And by the time the story ends, he's disgusted. He been in a pig pen, y'all. But the father said, I'm going to extend forgiveness anyhow. Lord. Lord. <laughs> Ooh. Did he deserve it? No, he didn't deserve it. But the right attitude from the father made him extend it anyhow. Watch, watch, watch. Watch how the daddy works it out. He says, listen. This is how I'm going to work it out. He says, I'm going to run to the boy. And when he runs to him, he throws his arms around him, yeah, yeah, yeah. gives him a big old hug, yeah. then gives him a kiss. Yeah. And then he says, watch this, go get a ring yeah. and a rope. Yeah. Put the ring on his finger, yeah. put the rope on his back, and then get some shoes put on his feet. And then, let's have a party. Yeah. Let's celebrate because my boy is back in the house. Did you, okay, did you notice? Did you notice the positive activity there? Did you notice the positive? He did not say, he did not do it like this. He didn't say, now you know good way. You shouldn't have done that. Doesn't make no sense. You shouldn't have done all that stuff. 
You, you, they, they, he, he didn't read them no riot act that we know that we can read our children. Never. You, you know you, my son. You know good and well. You ain't supposed to be down there acting like that, breath messing up my name. You, you ain't supposed to be doing all this foolishness. It make no sense. I done taught you all these years. You know what you're supposed to be doing. You ain't supposed to act like that. You know good from bad. You act like you. You see you to school. You throw rocks at the teacher. You do all this stuff. You, you, you know, I brought you in this world. I'll take you. Y'all know how y'all do. His immediate response was to run to him, give him a hug, give him a kiss, put a ring on his finger, roll on his back, make sure he has some shoes on his feet. Then he threw him a party. Watch, watch, watch it. Positive activity. Positive activity. He gave him a hug. It was a hug of healing. Yeah. Gave him a kiss. Yeah. It was a kiss of kindness. Gave him a robe and a ring. Right. Robe and a ring of restoration. Right. Gave him some shoes. Yeah. Shoes of sonship. Yeah. Then he gave him a feast. Yeah. A feast of favor. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Oh, bless his high name. Somebody ought to be shouting just right there. Because you know that's been your reality a time of 2, 10, or 12, somewhere down the line. You've experienced some forgiveness. Can I give it to you again? Some of us have experienced this, that, oh, you got a hug, it was a hug of healing. You got a kiss, it was a kiss of kindness. You got a robe and a ring, it was, a, it was for restoration. Get some shoes on his feet, it was for sonship, and then you had a feast, showed you a little bit of faith. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Even though you didn't oh, yes. deserve it. He says, listen here. He says, listen here, watch this though. He says, I ain't got time to deal with all the wrong stuff you did just yet. So we're going to get to that. We ain't going to act like it just didn't happen. But that's not the immediate response that I'm giving right now. He says, I'm going to begin with the positive. He says, he's telling them next week, we're going to talk about all this stuff that you done did because you got on my nerve. You did some stuff you weren't supposed to do. And I'm not going to act like it didn't happen. But before we get there, we got to restore some yeah. stuff. Yeah. Go on, put a ring on, put a ring on, put a robe on you. I'm going to cover you up, put some shoes on your feet. Now watch this. Watch this. He did not wait for the boy to get to the house to clean the pig pen off of him. Ooh. He put the robe on him while he was still sinking. He, 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 he put shoes on him while his feet were still muddy. He put a ring on his finger while he still had pig stuff under his fingernails. He said, I'm going to restore you then. I'm going to rectify some stuff. Can I find somebody here who knows good and well that Jesus didn't wait till you got yourself cleaned up to forgive you? He didn't wait till you got clean and make you new again. I need some people in here who know it, that you knew good and well you was filthy, but he still put a robe on you. You were messed up, but he still put some shoes on your misguided feet. You were jacked up, and he still gave you a party when you came into the house because you are his child. Say, now listen, I need you to understand got to respond with some positivity because I want there to be some reconciliation. I need us to fix what was broken. Can I give you some Bible for that? Because the Bible says that the Lord our God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. It's in your Bible. Look it up later. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. It's in there. And all too often we're so busy ready to fall out. We've forgotten that God is trying to mend broken pieces. Wants us to come back together again. He says, I want to reconcile with some positive activity. Here's the challenge though. Here's the challenge, people. Whenever you try to reconcile with some positive activity, it's always going to reveal other people's anger. I know. There's always somebody going to be talking about child if it were me. Child, you should have asked me before you did that. I don't know what you were thinking. 
It couldn't have been me. You giving too much grace. Did, did I mention there was two sons? There was an older brother. The older brother never left the house. The older brother was always in the house, seeming did what was right. He was always in the right posture, always right activity. He never left the house. But when he comes to the house, he hears dance. He hears music. He hears revelry. Then he asks one of the servants, what's going on? They said, listen, your brother's back. And your daddy's the kill the fat calf. Listen, that's the good stuff, y'all. And we're about to eat, drink, and be merry. About to have a party because your brother has come back home. And immediately, oh, big boy got an attitude. Big brother's upset. Big brother's angry. Because it shouldn't go down like this. Now, did I mention to you I, at the outset of this message that Jesus is talking to the Pharisees? The Pharisees, the legalistic folk, the, the folks who act like they ain't never made no mistake. The Pharisees, the ones who pretend like they always done everything right, always in the house, always at service every Sunday, never miss a Sunday, got a big old Bible under their arm. You know, these people, these are Pharisees. They, they, they highlighted scriptures in their Bible, always praying, got to act like they got a halo over their head. These are the Pharisees that he's talking to, and these are the people that Jesus is saying, listen, you so much entrenched in the law that you forgot how to love. I want you to understand, big brother, Said, big brother, now you act like one of them Pharisees. You need to understand that is telling that act the way I roll. He said, listen, son, don't act like that. Don't let your anger get the better of you. You always with me. Everything, everything I have is yours. You always have access to everything I have. You can't act like that and, and, and when somebody else gets a blessing. You can't act like that when somebody else gets delivered. You, you can't act like that when somebody else gets forgiven. I'm almost done. But think about this. Think about the people in the street. Think about the people in the prison. Now, brother, most, most, most of the time, most of the time, everybody knows that most of the time, people in jail, uh, they, 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 they may be guilty, they may not be guilty, but a few of them, watch this, a few of them may get released tomorrow, maybe the next day, maybe the next few weeks. Then you got the people that are out there in the street who have unfortunate realities that are taking over their lives. But the people in jail, off the street, they may not dress like us. But they'll come in here to us, who's always been in the house. And then we'll look at them like they don't belong. Like they shouldn't be here. And we act like everybody in here got it all together. Can I please remind you, this is not a place where everybody has it together. This is not a place where everybody's doing the right thing. This is a hospital, uh, at best a rehab facility. Everybody got something they need fixed. Everybody's got something they need to be worked on. Can I find somebody who can testify? The reason I come is because I need the Lord to work on me. But we got to be real careful that we don't get that big brother's mentality. Because, because sometimes you can look across the room because you know they mess because they mess with public. Because you know what they did. Because you know what she said. You know what he said. You got to be real careful not to act like those brothers and sisters and act like they don't belong. They need fixing just like you need fixing. They need spiritual growth just like you need spiritual growth. I'm getting ready to close. I'm closing this message when I tell you the work of forgiveness. Watch this. It also gives us the opportunity to reimagine possibilities again. Can I close it like that? Right. Gives us the opportunity to reimagine possibilities again. Daddy starts talking to the son. Yeah. He says, son, I know you're upset. Mm -hmm. 
talking to Big Brother. But you got to get rid of all that. Yeah. You got to get rid of all that anger, that malice, that bitterness. Oh, yeah. You got to get rid of all that. Oh, yeah. He said, listen, this my son, my youngest son, he was dead. Mm -hmm. Now he's alive. Yeah. Yeah. He was lost. Yeah. Now he's found. Let me give it to you again. He says, I need you to understand. He said, my boy was dead. Yeah. He's alive again. He was lost, but now he's found. He said, I want you to know that because he's coming back home, because extended forgiveness has been in his direction, he who is now dead yeah. can now imagine yeah. new possibilities. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Listen, Whenever, whenever you're extending grace and the grace that you receive, whenever forgiveness has been shown in your direction, you have new possibilities. All of us, every day, we extended grace, mercy. Every day you wake up, you've been given brand new mercies. You've been given a new possibility. You've been given another expression of life. You can, you can envision some stuff. You can embrace some stuff now because a newness has shown up. He was dead, which meant he was cut off. Should have never been able to reconcile, reimagine re a rebound, but now he's alive again. Not because, watch this, he did anything right, but because I released myself from the burden of having to make him remember yeah. what he did was wrong. Yeah. He says, and now we can move on to a greater relationship. Now we can move on to a greater peace. We can move on to greater productivity, oh, yeah. imagining new possibilities yeah. because he's alive again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's found again. And, and this, my friends, this is the, the, the work of forgiveness. That every one of us, if we want to represent Christ well, we'll have to embody at some point along our journey this business of forgiveness. Oh, Pastor, that sounds so hard. Yeah, it's difficult, but it's possible. If you claim that you can do all things, through Christ who strengthens you. If you claim that eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard the great things that the Lord has prepared for them who love, if you claim to be a child of God, and I know you are, then at some point in your journey, you just can't come to church and shout about everything. At some point, you have to function in this business this work of forgiveness. Amen, amen, amen. The door is open. The door is open. This, this, this was for your soul. This was for your mind. This was for something that um, you can chew on it for a little while. Because it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen instantaneously. But if you have the mindset of God, the attitude of God, it can happen for you. Stop letting the devil tell you, 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 don't, you shouldn't be doing that. Do you know what they did to you? Do you know what they said to you? you know how they treated you? Stop letting the devil dictate what God is trying to get you to do. That's right. That's it. You got to tell them, devil, stop talking. Yeah. You ain't got no power. I ain't trying That's to right. hear you. We have those who are coming asking for prayer. Sister Hobbs could not be here. She is ill, so she is sent word that she is requesting prayer. Banks is not here. She has sent word that she is requesting prayer. Prayer. Thankful unto God for this our brother who has come asking for prayer. He wants us to 
Waters has requested prayer. Amen. Listen. Something about when you put it in the master's hand. It lifts you from unnecessary stress, unnecessary burdens. Because sometimes you're carrying some stuff that the Lord didn't intend for you to carry. It, it was an experience, but it was something that says, I need to look to the hills from which cometh my help. Because if I do that, whatever burden that me, may be weighing me, may be weighing me down, I know that God is capable, strong enough, willing, wants to take this burden from me. If it's healing, he can do it. If it's restoration, he can do it. He, he's running to you just like you running to him. Throwing his arms around you, hugging you, giving you a kiss. Dressing you up better than you was before. You just have to have faith enough to say, God, I trust you to do what only you can. Let's pray. God, our Father, how we thank you for these who have come, who understand, God, that by faith, you are more than able to hear and answer their call. Father, we pray right now that whatever the desire is that's on their heart, Father, that you would see that. And if it be your will, Father, that you would grant their desires right now in the name of Jesus. Father, how we pray, God, that you would move in such a way, Father, that they can feel your power, your anointing, your spirit falling fresh upon them. Father, let them know that you are standing there with an outstretched arm and a hand saying, give me that heavy load. Because I can get rid of it. Father, give us the ability, the mindset, the attitude that says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But then God, there are others who may not have come, who may have a need right now. Father, meet them where they are. Bless right now, heal right now, restore right now, like only you can. But then God, here's what our faith tells us. Our faith tells us you're already moving. You're already working. You're already putting smiles on faces. You're already healing in such a way Father, that it's going to confuse the doctors. You're already doing things in our hearts, minds, and soul, God, that we have the faith to say, God, thank you for what you're doing right now in our lives. Father, the devil doesn't like what's happening. He's trying to flicker lights. He's trying to distort power. But God, that's just a reminder that says we're doing something right you're pleased by it because the devil wants to get busy. But God, we trust you enough that you will dispatch our angels of protection all around us. That whatever darks, whatever snares and traps the enemy may be trying to set, God, that you would block it right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, as we pray this prayer, let us be able to leave it with you. And not pick it up and think about it again. Let us be able to throw it all on the altar and not look for it later. Let us walk away saying, I got rid of my heavy load. And I put it in the master's hand. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for answering us. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord somebody. God is able to do anything but fail. Amen, amen, amen. Work of forgiveness. God forgave you. Now you are able to give. 
just like God did. God loved you enough that he sent his only begotten son who was crucified, beat, bruised for us who got into a borrowed tomb one Friday, stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday, but early Sunday morning got up with all power in his hand for your forgiveness. That's how much he loves you. And if the Lord loved you enough to look beyond all of your dirt and your mess and your 2024 pig pen that you still got on you, how much more than we to not somebody else. Amen. 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 Listen, we are excited about what God has done. We're going to keep moving in our service. We are now up to our tithe and our offering. Amen. Amen. If you wish, uh, if you need to be serviced by an usher with an envelope or anything, please raise your hand and they'll make sure you have whatever it is that you need. If you're looking for an electronic way to give, you can go to our, our website at www.gebdallas.org. Right at the top, it says Ways to Give. You can click that link and it will take you to our Givelify where you can watch this. So seeds into good ground. Amen. So we know that your seed sowing, when you sow into good ground, will not come back void. So please, ma'ams and sirs, let us get ready to prepare the Lord with our, worship the Lord with our gifts. And then as we get ready to come around, Brother Hyde, we can hide and the Torres will be standing to receive our tithe and our offering. The black box there is if you want to be a blessing to the preacher, but first and foremost, as always, make sure that you're giving your tithe and your offering. Amen? Amen. And then as a reminder, uh, you don't have to wait to 2025 to start your campaign 50. You can start it now. Amen. Amen. If you want to be a part, if you want to sign up and say, I'm going to commit to campaign 50 and want to know more information about it, see me immediately following service. I will fill you in and I will make sure you are documented and counted in that number. Amen. Our deaconess are coming. As we get ready to come around, we'll be preparing for our Lord's Supper and Communion on this Sunday.
Jesus' betrayal, Jesus gathered all the disciples in the upper room. And there, there was a table that was spread with the feast and the Lord was preparing the table. And as he was preparing, he was teaching. And as he was teaching, he began to say, listen, one of you will betray me. Of course, it caused a stir and a murmur amongst all of them. And they began to ask the question, Lord, is it me? Lord, is it I? And finally, Judas said, Lord, is it me? The Lord looked at him and he said, whatever you must do, go and do it quickly. And he continued to prepare the table and then he said, let a man examine himself. For he that eat it unworthily, eat it, drink it, damnation to his own soul, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this cause there are many who are sick and even sleep among you. So we want to pause and take this moment to pray for ourselves and for others that God would clean us up, forgive us of our sin. God, we pray right now that when you find that that's not pleasing within your sight, God, we pray that you would clean us up. Father, we say we're sorry. Forgive us for we have all sinned falling short of your glory, but thanks be unto God for your grace and your mercy, that you are willing, more than able, by your love and your compassion to forgive us, even right now, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. After they had prayed, he took the bread and broke it. He said, take, eat ye all of it, for this bread which is broken for you is broken in the remembering and the remission of sin. For as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me and they did all eat together. Likewise, in the same manner, he took the cup before he supped. He said, this wine represents the blood that was shed on Calvary for the remission of sin. For as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me and they did all drink together. They went out to a Mount of Olives to pray. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go to, but we do have our various homes. Amen. Our ushers are coming by to retrieve those cups. Please do not leave them on the floor. Amen. Amen. We want to dispose of them. Amen. Listen, as a reminder, Deacon Morton wants to meet with all men, all men immediately following service. So please, men, don't run out. Let's meet with Deacon Morton after service. Amen. All right. Let's all stand. Just wanna pray. Amen. Amen. 